Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and look who's back this week! Hi! Henry's back, and today is the next installment of our presidential series, and we're taking a look at who, Henry? Chester Arthur. Very good, and what number president is he? 21. Very good, 21st president of the United States. We got a lot of cool things to tell you about Chester Arthur. As a matter of fact, he took over as president because he was the vice president of who, Henry? James Garfield. That's right. And when James Garfield was assassinated, Chester Arthur took over as president. We're going to get into all that stuff today for you. But first, what we need you to do is what, Henry? Hit subscribe down below, leave all your comments and questions, and hit that little bell. <laughs> That's right. Hit subscribe down below, comments, questions, leave them. Thumbs and of up. course, thumbs up. That's right. And of course, that little notification bell. Hit it so you can be notified when we release a new video. And when is that, Henry? Every single week. Every single week, that's right. And now we're going to take a look. So you need to sit back and relax. Get the potato chips. Yeah, well, wait. we got to tell them first about some things before they get the potato chips, right? <laughs> sit back and relax because we're going to look at the 21st president of the United States, right? Yeah. The guy behind us. This guy right here. Chester Arthur. And this is Dead History. Dead History. Hey guys, welcome back. TJ here with Dead History. Here, of course, with Henry. Hey. And the guy behind us, yep, that's the 21st president of the United States. Who is that, Henry? Chester Arthur. That's right, Chester Arthur. And we got some cool things to tell you about Chester Arthur, such as... He was actually a really, really sharp dresser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a really well-dressed man. We're going to tell you about all that. Another cool thing about Chester Arthur is we know about controversy over the last 10 years or so in our country of where president might have been born and citizenship. There was controversy and some, you know, questions surrounding uh, President Obama, of course. So Chester Arthur, that happened to him as well. Yeah, there was controversy surrounding where he was born and if he was actually a U.S. citizen. We're going to get into all that and tell you all about it. And another really cool thing, Chester Arthur took over when who was assassinated? James Garfield. That's right, the 20th president of the United States, James Garfield. Chester Arthur was his vice president. He took over when Garfield was assassinated. And... Chester Arthur never had a vice president. Never. Yep, for all four years he was in office, he never had a vice president. Another thing, Chester Arthur's wife died very shortly before he ever became president. And we're going to tell you about who took over as acting first lady in the White House. We're going to get into all these fascinating things about Chester Arthur. You did the subscribes, you did the likes, you did the comments, they did the what? Notification bell, right? Notification bell. They did got, all of it. Got now, the potato chips. Now they need the what? They need the potato chips, yeah. right? They need the soda and the potato chips. They need the soda and the potato chips. And now sit back and relax, because we're going to take a look at the guy behind us, the 21st president of the United States. Who is it, Henry? J. Nope. Um, Ch Chester. There you go. You got it. No, you did it. You're doing I was great. I going to say James Goldstein. That's all right. I know it's confusing. You did a good job. So sit back and relax and enjoy, because here we go. Chester Arthur. Enjoy. Hey, guys. Welcome to Dead History. This is TJ, of course, with Dead History, and our next presidential series installment taking a look at the 21st president of the United States, Chester Arthur. I'm here, of course, with Henry. Hi. Henry's back with me this week. Good to have him back. And uh, we're going to jump right in here. Um, of course, part one's going to just be about his uh, birthplace, childhood, that sort of thing, early life of uh, Chester Arthur. So we're going to jump right in. Chester Arthur was born in Fairfield, Vermont. Uh, Chester Arthur's mother, Malvina Stone, was born in Berkshire, Vermont, the daughter of George Washington Stone and Judith Stevens. Her family was primarily of English and Welsh descent, and her paternal grandfather, Uriah Stone, had served in the Continental Army during the American Revolution. <clears throat> Chester Arthur's father, William Arthur, was born in 1796 in Dreen, Cullybacky, County Antrim, Ireland, 
to a Presbyterian family of Scottish-Irish descent. William's mother was born Eliza McHarg, and she married Alan Arthur. William, Chester Arthur's father, graduated from college in Belfast and immigrated to the province of Lower Canada in 1819 or 1820. It's unsure of the exact year. Malvina Stone met William Arthur when Arthur was teaching school in Dunham, Quebec, near the Vermont border. They married in Dunham on April 12th of 1821, soon after meeting. The Arthurs moved to Vermont after the birth of their first child, Regina. They quickly moved from Burlington to Jericho and finally to Waterville, as William received positions teaching at different schools. William Arthur also spent a brief time studying law, but while still in Waterville, he departed from both his legal studies and his Presbyterian upbringing to join the Free Will Baptists. He spent the rest of his life as a minister in that sect. William Arthur became an outspoken abolitionist, which often made him unpopular with some members of his congregations and contributed to his family's frequent moves. In 1828, the family moved again to Fairfield, where Chester Arthur was born the following year. He was the fifth of nine children. He was named Chester after Chester Abel, the physician Chester Abel. Chester Abel? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Chester Abel was the physician and family friend who assisted in his birth. And Alan for his paternal grandfather, but... Uh, as I said, Chester Arthur was named for the doctor who delivered him, Chester Abel, but his middle name came from his paternal grandfather. But according to some sources, Chester Arthur chose to pronounce his middle name with an emphasis on the second syllable. So it was not Allen. It's not Chester Allen Ar Arthur. It's Chester Allen Arthur. Chester Allen. Yep. So it's Chester Allen Arthur. Yep, Chester Aylin Arthur. <clears throat> so interesting stuff. He pronounced this. Yeah. Alan. Alan. It's a land. A land. It's a land. And I know it's a land because the president's uh, son was named Alan, and the president's grandson told me. He corrected me a couple of times. And uh, it was never Alan, and it's not Alan, it's Alan. That's the way that the Arthurs pronounced it. That's okay. So, now the family remained in Fairfield <clears throat> until 1832, when William Arthur's profession took them to churches in several towns of Vermont in upstate New York. The family finally settled in Schenectady, New York area. Uh, Chester Arthur had seven siblings who actually lived to adulthood. Regina, Jane, Almeida, Anne, Malvina, and William, <clears throat> George, and Mary. Is that all of them? Let me see here. Yep, that is all of them. The family's frequent moves later spawned accusations that frequent means like they moved a lot. They moved often. <clears throat> The family's frequent moves later spawned accusations that Arthur was not a natural-born citizen of the United States. When Arthur was nominated for vice president in 1880, a New York attorney and political opponent, opponent Arthur P. Hinman, initially speculated that Arthur was born in Ireland and did not come to the United States until he was 14 years old. Had that been true, opponents might have argued that Arthur was ineligible for the vice presidency under the United States Constitution's Natural Born Citizen Clause. When Hinman's original story did not take root, he spread a new rumor that Arthur was born in Canada. This claim, too, failed to gain credence. Um, so yes, political opponents of Arthur's did question his citizenship and alleged he was born in Canada, making him ineligible to serve as president because he wasn't a natural born citizen. However, some argue that even if born in Canada, this point was meaningless since his mother was a U.S. citizen at the time of his birth. Arthur denied the allegations and continued on with his term as president. 
as we know, and I touched on in our uh, opening video, Barack Obama, you know, faced similar accusations. Uh, and Barack Obama obviously wasn't the first to face accusations that he wasn't a natural born citizen. Uh, because his father lived in Ireland and Canada before he was born and his parents moved around within the States quite a bit after, after he was born, Chester Arthur's detractors tried to convince the public that he was ineligible for the presidency. So um, all this, despite all this, I should say, Chester Arthur was indeed born in Vermont. Right, Henry? Vermont. Vermont. Where is that? Uh, it's like up. It's kind of like up very northeast uh, above like New York State. Okay? Mm -hmm. Kind of near New Hampshire. Got it? Okay. As I said, Chester Arthur's dad was a clergyman. Uh, he was very involved in the Baptist church that he, uh, you know, the sect that he was a, a part of, a member of. So, yes, he was very, very uh, much involved, and he was, he did serve as a clergyman. Um, when Chester Arthur attended Union College in Schenectady, New York, he helped throw the school bell into the Erie Canal as a prank. Little fun fact there. Play. Yeah, he threw the school bell into the Erie Canal. Pretty, pretty, pretty fun. What's the Erie Canal? Erie Canal is a waterway uh, that was used. Uh, another questionable deed during his time at college, he and some like-minded friends got into a brawl with James K. Polk supporters. So, yeah, he was, uh, he, he was kind of a regular Bluto. You know, I mean, he, he just, he just, uh, he, he was a, kind of an interesting guy, especially when he came to college. He kind of got himself in a little bit of mischief. After graduating, uh, Chester Arthur took a job as the principal at the North Pawnell Academy in Vermont, which was meeting in the basement of his father's church at the time. Oddly, James A. Garfield taught penmanship there three years later. By the time Garfield started showing off his handwriting, though, Arthur had already moved on. So a little interesting fact, Chester Arthur and uh, James Garfield, not only the president and vice president tie, they also had a tie to a uh, school that they, they taught at and didn't even know. Uh, a 24-year-old Chester Arthur, then a junior partner at Culver, Parker & Arthur Law Firm, successfully represented Lizzie Jennings, who was forcibly removed from a streetcar in 1854 because of her skin color. The day after a jury awarded Jennings $225 in damages, the 3rd Avenue Railroad Railway Company had its streetcars desegregated. So pretty interesting. When he was 24 years old... He uh, he represented Lizzie Jennings, and uh, they won. They they won their case uh, about you know being discriminated against because uh, of the color of her skin. So really cool thing. That's actually pretty cool that Chester Arthur did. Uh, Chester Arthur was actually diagnosed with Bright's disease not long after he became president. Um, so to try to improve his failing health, he took a trip to Yellowstone National Park with Robert Todd Lincoln among others, and yeah, pretty interesting stuff. He was diagnosed with Bright's disease. Bright's disease is basically an infection uh, of the kidneys, um, and, you know, I'll get into that a little later uh, in the second part, but, um, yeah, that's inevitably pretty much kind of what did him in, too. So he did have kidney disease, and it was known as Bright's disease. Chester Arthur was actually the member of the ultra-exclusive Ristigage, 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 a uh, salmon club, a skilled fisherman. Arthur belonged to the rest. I don't know if it's Restigage, Restigage, a uh, salmon club. Yeah, maybe Restigage. Uh, a group of fishermen from New York who traveled to Canada to fish. He was a skilled fisherman. He once reportedly caught 80 pound bass off the coast of Rhode Island. Chester Arthur did. So pretty cool. Uh, he was definitely a very skilled fisherman uh, and very active in his fisherman hobby. Uh, Pre-POTUS, it wouldn't have been unusual to see Chester Arthur sporting a jacket that would be right at home at Augusta National Golf Club. Uh, he was prone to wearing a green coat to show his support 
for the Fenian Brotherhood, an Irish Republican organization. He was a sharp-dressed man. Arthur was sometimes, sometimes called Elegant Arthur. Elegant Arthur. For his interest in fashionable attire, and on his last day in office, four young women offered to marry him. It was said he had over 80 pairs of pants and often changed them several times a day. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? Why? I don't know. He just he was a sharp dressed man. He liked like fashion. Fashion. He was once the president of the New York Arcade Railway Company. So pretty cool. Chester Arthur once the president of the New York Arcade Railway Company. He's the president of the United States. Yes. Chester Arthur's first son died suddenly when he was only three years old. Two more of his children, Chester Al uh, Allen Jr. and Ellen, survived into adulthood. So his first son died when he was only three, um, and his other two children lived until they were adults. And last thing I will leave you with here is Chester Allen Arthur's wife died of pneumonia the year before he became president. Uh, Arthur honored her by having flowers placed in front of her portrait at the White House every single day. So his wife, she did die of pneumonia uh, the year before he became president. He used to have flowers put there um, every single day um, in front of her portrait at the White House. So pretty interesting stuff there. Um, her name, let me get her name for you. Her name was... Do, 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 do. Ellen Herndon. Ellen Herndon. Uh, and she died in 1880. Uh, she was the wife of the 21st president. She died of pneumonia in January of 1880. Um, and her husband was elected vice president that November. Um, so she never made it to the White House. Uh, so interesting stuff. And on your screen here, that is actually a picture of Ellen Lewis Herndon Arthur. Uh, that is Chester Arthur's wife who died of pneumonia a year before he took over as president. So it's very unfortunate. It was actually January 10th of 1880. Uh, Nell Arthur came down with a cold. She quickly developed pneumonia and died two, two days later on January 12th of 1880 at the age of only 42. And she died in New York City, New York. Uh, and she was buried in the Arthur family plot in Albany, New York. So, uh... He, Arthur deeply mourned the death of his wife. Um, he, he definitely, like I said, he used to keep uh, keep flab, put flowers in front of her portrait every day at the White House. He also, uh, you could see uh, St. John's Episcopal Church from his office after he took the office of president. And he commissioned a stained glass window dedicated to his wife at that church. And he had it installed where he could view it at night as the lights were kept on within the church. So, uh, he definitely was tore up about his wife dying, of course, and, uh, pretty interesting stuff. So, so that is it. That is the early life, birthplace, early childhood, kind of, uh, some college shenanigans, if you will. And then, uh, of course the death of his wife, unfortunately, leading up to his presidency and vice presidency, um, of Chester Arthur. So that was part one. In part two, we're going to take a look at his presidency and then, of course, of his death and his burial site in uh, New York. And we'll get into all that in part two. Right, Henry? Yes. All right. Well, thank you for joining us in part one. We thank you so much for the subscribes. Yes, Randall. Yes. Thank you so much for all the support, all the comments, questions, all that stuff. We love it. Keep it coming. Thank you so much. And we will see you tomorrow for part two. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.